Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we will see the Ethernet transmitter algorithm. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. In today's session, we have three outcomes. Let's see what are they. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to. Outcome number one, we will understand the Ethernet transmitter algorithm. Outcome number two, we will understand runt frames. And last outcome, we will know about exponential backoff. Before we step into the Ethernet transmitter algorithm, we will see the Ethernet adapter. If we have a host computer, and this host computer will be having an adapter where this Ethernet cable will be connected to this adapter only. I will show you the Ethernet adapter or the Ethernet NIC card. This is actually the Ethernet adapter or we will call it as the NIC card that is the network interface card. This NIC card will be the part of the host computer so that we can just plug in our Ethernet cable to this port. In order to connect the Ethernet cable and this port, we need RJ45 socket. Now let's see the access protocol for Ethernet. The algorithm is commonly called Ethernet's media access control that is MAC algorithm which is implemented in hardware of the network adapter. That is already we have seen the network adapter and this algorithm that is this Ethernet media access control algorithm which is implemented in the hardware of this network adapter. And what's the access method used by Ethernet? It is CSMA CD, that is carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. Already we have seen about this carrier sense multiple access with collision detection technique in one of the previous lectures. If you want to know more about it, I request you to watch my previous lecture titled carrier sense multiple access. And then what is the encoding scheme that is used by Ethernet? The encoding method is the Manchester encoding technique. Why do we need this Manchester encoding technique? I already told you that the Ethernet cable will be connected through this port. So application layer data is then given to transport layer, then comes to the network layer, then comes to the data link layer where this NIC card is actually. So the frames that are created by the host computer have to be placed on the cables, that is this channel. So when it wants to place the data on the channel, we need to do some encoding technique. Encoding means the actual data or the frame that is created by this host computer have to be converted into signals because the Ethernet cable will carry only signals. Ethernet cable is an example of copper cable. So it carries the data in the form of electrical signals. Ethernet uses Manchester encoding technique for converting data bits into signals. Let's now dive into the Ethernet transmitter algorithm. When the adapter has a frame to send, we know when the adapter means the host computer has the frame to send and the channel or the line is idle and it transmits the frame immediately. Because the line is idle, so whenever the adapter has a frame to send, it sends the frame immediately. And what is the payload size of the frame? We know the upper bound or the maximum size of the data or the payload in the Ethernet frame will be of 1500 bytes. So the upper bound of 1500 bytes in the message means that the adapter can occupy the line for a fixed length of time. In the first point we have seen the adapter has a frame to send and the line is idle. What if the adapter has a frame and the line is not idle that is the line is busy. The third point answers this situation. When the adapter has a frame to send and the line is busy. It waits for the line to go idle and then transmits immediately. So whenever it finds that the line is idle, it places the frame. Whenever the line is busy, this algorithm waits for a certain period of time and when it finds the line is idle, it places the frame or it transmits the frame. Ethernet is said to be a CSMA 1 persistent protocol. Why Ethernet is called as CSMA 1 persistent protocol? Because an adapter with a frame to send transmits with the probability 1 whenever a busy line goes idle. So whenever a busy line goes idle, this adapter places the frames in order to send that with the probability of 1. And that is why the Ethernet is said to be a CSMA 1 persistent protocol. To know more about this, I request you to watch my previous lecture titled CSMA. Is there any centralized control in the Ethernet? We will see that. Since there is no centralized control, it is possible for two or more adapters to begin transmitting at the same time. Either because both found the line to be idle or both had been waiting for a busy line to become idle. Let's assume there are two host computers. When both the host computers finds the line to be idle, 
So they place their frames at the same time and this leads to collision. Ethernet has no centralized control. When the frames collide with each other, this algorithm will intimate the host that the collision has happened. That is why Ethernet's access method is named as CSMA CD. CSMA CD means carrier sends multiple access with collision detection. Host will be able to know whether the collision has happened or not. When two or more host computer finds the line to be idle and they places their frames at the same time. When this situation happens, then two or more frames are said to be collide on the network. What happens when collision happens? Since Ethernet supports collision detection, each sender is able to determine that a collision is in progress. How host computers come to know whether collision has happened or not? At the moment, an adapter detects that its frame is colliding with another frame. It first makes sure to transmit a 32-bit jamming sequence. So whenever any node sends a 32-bit jamming sequence, it means the frame has collided with each other. Then what the host computer will do? It then stops transmission. See, please make a note of this point. It's a very important point. When the adapter detects its frame is colliding with another frame, it first makes sure to transmit a 32-bit jamming sequence so that other host will come to note that collision has happened and this host computer will stop its transmission immediately. Thus, a transmitter will minimally send 96 bits in case of collision. Why the host computer has to send 96 bits? Because it has to send a 32-bit jamming sequence just to indicate a collision has happened. And just 32 bits are not sufficient. It needs to append a 64-bit preamble. So the transmitter will minimally send 96 bits in case of collision. Now let's see what are runt frames. A runt frame is an Ethernet frame that is less than IEEE 802.3's minimum length of 64 bytes. When we find a frame which is less than 64 bytes, then these frames are runt frames. You may have a question in your mind. Ethernet will never create a frame that is less than the minimum length of 64 bytes. Then how a runt frame is created? Because runt frames are frames that are less than 64 bytes. These runt frames are most commonly caused by collisions. Suppose if two frames are colliding with each other, the result of that collision will be a runt frame. Normally these runt frames are caused because of collisions. Is there any other reasons for creating runt frames? Yes, we have other reasons too. Not only collision, there are other possible causes for creating runt frames. They may be a malfunctioning network card or the NIC card, the buffer under run or the duplex mismatch. Duplex mismatch means one side of the line it will be running in half duplex mode and the other side will be running in full duplex mode. This will also cause runt frames. Because of software issues in the host side, it can create runt frames. Let's see the worst case scenarios of Ethernet transmitter algorithm. Now let's see the worst case scenario A where A sends a frame at time t. That is A is sending its frame at time t. Let's come to point number B. The frame that was sent by host computer A will be received by the destination computer B. At what time A's frame will be received by B? So A's frame arrives at B at t plus d. Why? Because at time t only, A has transmitted the frame. So it takes d time, where d is the delay, the delay it involves, the transmission delay as well as the propagation delay. So, so at t plus d time, A's frame arrives at B. Now let's move on to point number C. So B begins transmitting at t plus d and collides with A's frame. What is mentioned here is, let's assume there are 200 bits in this frame and all bits are transmitted and received by B except the last bit. The time when the last bit is received by B, at that time B begins its transmission. So what happens? And because of this single bit, collision happens. So B begins transmitting at T plus D. At T plus D only A's frame arrives at B. At the verge of A's frame, B begins transmitting at T plus D and collides with A's frame. So what happens? Both the frames becomes unusable. Because of this collision, what happens to this frame? It will be a runt frame. B knows this collision and B sends the runt frame at what time it will be received. This frame is started at T plus D and it will take D delay in order to reach A. 
So B's front frame arrives at A at what time? T plus 2D. Why? Collision has happened at T plus D and this front frame will take a delay of D in order to reach A. The time it has started is T plus D and it takes D delay in order to reach. So T plus D plus D is T plus 2D. So B's front frame arrives at A at T plus 2D. And before we conclude, we will see what is exponential back off. Exponential backoff is the technique that is used by Ethernet in order to reduce the probability of collision. Let's see how. Once an adapter has detected a collision and stopped its transmission, it waits for a certain amount of time and tries again. After waiting for a certain period of time, the Ethernet algorithm finds the channel is still busy. What it will do? Each time, the adapter tries to transmit but fails. So it doubles the amount of time it waits before trying again. For example, if the node has waited for 1 second previously, for the next attempt it will wait for 2 seconds. After the expiry of 2 seconds, it will try to place the frame on the channel. Again, if it is busy, it waits for 4 seconds and it waits for 8 seconds and it goes on. For every try, it doubles the amount of the time it waits before trying again. So this strategy of doubling the delay interval between each retransmission attempt is known as the exponential backoff. Exponential backoff is the strategy that is followed by the Ethernet algorithm in order to reduce the probability of collision. And that's it guys. I hope now you know the Ethernet transmitter algorithm. We understood the run frames and we know about the exponential backoff strategy. I hope you liked the video and thank you for watching.